This morning we picked raspberries off of the raspberry patch in our front yard and I've been searching the internet for a good recipe. At first I thought I was going to do scones, which I was really excited about, but I don't have the right flour that, um, that the recipe I was looking at calls for and I can't find another one that I love. So I searched the internet and I found a raspberry creme brulee and um, I'm kind of going to put my own twist into it. I'm going to kind of follow directions and kind of not follow directions. So we'll just have to see how it goes. I've gathered my ingredients. I've got my maple syrup, heavy whipping cream, vanilla, and eggs. So let's get started. First I'm going to separate my yolk and my white. So now I have my whites and my yolks separated. Now I'm going to add my cream to the saucepan. That's two cups or 16 ounces. And one fourth of a cup of maple syrup. Whisk that in. I turned it on like um, medium low. I'm not going to boil. I'm just going to simmer it. And then I'm just going to add a dash of of vanilla and let that come to a nice simmer. While that is coming to a simmer, I'm gonna go ahead and get my rampkins um, ready. And I'm just gonna put a couple, just a handful of shrub, uh, raspberries in each. While it's still cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and whisk my yolks. My cream mixture is done, and so now I'm going to whisk a small amount of it into this so that it doesn't cook the eggs. Now I'm going to let it sit for... Now I'm gonna let it sit for 30 minutes to cool. Okay, it's been 30 minutes, so let's fill the rampkins. Looks good. Okay, now we're gonna put some water in the bottom of the pan. minutes I believe and then we'll pull it out and get it in the fridge one thing I didn't do that one of the recipes I saw said to do was to cover it with tin foil and I'm fresh out so we'll just have to see if this works since I have egg whites left over I think that I'm going to go ahead and put them in the fridge for today at least and hopefully I'm going to be back to make some good stuff with them Let's check it. It's been 40 minutes in the oven. I think it looks great. Now we're going to take it out and put it on a wire rack. I wanted to talk a minute about making your own vanilla. It is so, so easy. Let me show you my setup. My vodka on the right, the container I keep in my baking cabinet, and on the left is my big jug where I'm brewing the vanilla. It's been one of the easiest and most cost-effective economical things I have ever done. Basically what you do is you get a jar and you fill it with vanilla beans. Then you go to the ABC store and you get some vodka. 
I got vodka that was made in France from grapes. Because I have issues with gluten, I wanted to make sure that I got a completely gluten-free vodka. There are other safe gluten-free vodkas out there. There's lots of lists on Google, so just check that out if you don't want to buy this brand. Next, you put the vanilla beans in your bottle, then you pour the vodka in, then you put your bottle back in the cabinet, and you shake it every couple days. You let it sit, depending on how many vanilla beans you put in, you can put in a lot or you can put in a little. I had, I started off with a little and I felt like it was just taking a really, really, really long time to brew, which is fine. I mean, it, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It just depends upon your budget. And so I got a good deal on some vanilla beans and I went ahead and purchased them. And so now I have more vanilla beans. So from what I read, you can just keep pouring out all the vanilla and then adding more vodka in and just continually brewing it. If for some reason the beans are really weak, then then that's the time to replace them. I've read like years, like people have had, have been using the same beans for like 10 years. I don't know if that's what I'm gonna do. I'm only a couple of years in and I added a lot of beans. So this batch is ready and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it out of this jar so I can add more vodka in and keep brewing. I'm just gonna top off my baking jar And then I'm gonna put this into another jar. And there you have it. I'll have vanilla before I run out the next time. This is a good Christmas gift that you can do in advance to give at Christmas. So you can start it now if you want. You can buy bottles about this size um, and you can either, you can do a couple different things. You can either brew a big batch in a jar this size or even bigger, or you can put in like a vanilla bean or two in one of these little jars, fill it up with vodka, set it aside, and then that can be a gift that you can just have to give to people um, if you know, you're going to their house or for Christmas or birthdays or whatever and then they can keep filling it up and they'll have endless um, vanilla as well. I hope that you find this project as rewarding as I did. It took me years before I decided to make vanilla. I knew that it was easy to make, but just the daunting task of collecting all of the ingredients and then doing it. I was actually pregnant with was that was I pregnant with Gideon? I might have been pregnant with mm, no. I know one of the times I was pregnant with Gideon, I went into the ABC store, large and pregnant, and the people thought I was crazy because I was making vanilla with really expensive vodka. Leave a comment below if you if you have brewed vanilla, if you haven't, if you're gonna try it, and just let me know your experience. Yum, yum, yum. I'm gonna go ahead and get those in the fridge now so that maybe we can have it this evening. How do I do this? All right guys, the cream brulee is done and, and now we're going to melt the sugar on top of the cream brulee. I can't do it. It's It's gone. It's like crazy, this thing is like nuts. Okay. All right, well, let's try it. Mmm. Wow, that was really good. Really good.